to return to Juilliard to pursue the Masters in 48, still on the GI Bill, when I was able to earn my Masters uh, 1950 in, in piano. And was engaged by a manager to record his first solo album. Price, the famous opera singer, was a student at Juilliard at the same time that I was there during that time. I might have been just a little ahead of her, probably being a little older than she was, but, but we knew each other, knew each other very well. I, I don't know whether you have been identified in the interviews, but this is my daughter who is interviewing me, and she is, has placed this question about uh, a special person I met at Fisk. Well, she's talking about my wife-to-be. My wife, Ann Gamble, was actually a student at Fisk at the same time that I was. She was a little ahead of me. And um, she, she finished as the class of 41. And uh, she was invited back to teach in 1950, I believe it was, we, we hadn't looked at each other in a special way as undergraduates, but she would came back to teach and I was invited to come back to teach in 1954. Gamble and I became interested in, in each other when we both were there as members of the faculty. One of my most, most talented students at the time, Carol Stone, really thought she was playing Cupid. So one day after her lesson, I said, knock on Miss Gamble's door. I think she would like to show you something. And when Carol went and knocked on Miss Gamble's door, she showed her the engagement ring. It just happened that um, Dr. Work had chosen her to be the official accompanist for the Jubilee Singers. See, at this time, Professor Work was in charge. And this was a time that a, a very fine European tour had been arranged for the singers. We knew this was coming up, and we married in May, the last of May of 56 and um, they were to leave in September to go to Europe for this uh, two week two two months tour of Europe. Four years later, Mrs. Kennedy gave birth to a daughter, Nina Gamble Kennedy.
We have concluded the program tonight at the National Gallery of Art with Matthew Kennedy playing Triana from Iberia by Isaac Albert. Mr. Kennedy is being called back to the stage at the East Garden Court at the National Gallery of Art by tonight's audience. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. In 1957, when John W. Work was suffering from ill health, he asked Matthew Kennedy to take over as director of the group. Although Matthew felt inadequate to step into his shoes, Mr. Work insisted that he was the best person for the position at the time, and so he accepted directorship of the Fisk Jubilee Singers. We're standing in front of Jubilee Hall at Fisk University, Nashville, Tennessee. And you've been listening to the world-famous Fisk University Jubilee Singers. This is their director, Mr. Matthew Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy, how long has this marvelous group been organized? The first group left our campus October 6, 1871. Was it organized for a purpose? Yes, they went out to raise funds for the university. The university was in dire financial straits. And where did you go on that first tour? From Boston, at the uh, Boston Jubilee, where Johann Strauss was in the audience. They were invited to the White House. They sang for President Grant. Now, I called this group world famous, and justly so. You've toured outside of the country, haven't you? Yes, to Europe for a large and grand European tour. They sang for Queen Victoria and most of the crowned heads of Europe at the time. Well, I'm glad that Queen Victoria, as we've no come to know in the world, the word Victorian, I'm glad she heard this kind of singing. talked about his early days of becoming director of the Jubilee Singers and they were traveling through the south and they went to a restaurant and in the restaurant I think the story was a young girl came and brought them all glasses of water like about 15 or 16 Jubilee Singers and they all got a glass of water and um, but she didn't know they didn't serve blacks at that restaurant and she was a young girl who was kind of naive and the owner of the restaurant told her to ask them to leave. And she came back and said, oh, you, you know, I can't serve you, you have to leave. And Mr. Kennedy said, as they were leaving, they heard the glasses breaking. And the, the owner of the restaurant announced that, don't worry, you'll never have to drink after those, you know. Uh, and he broke every glass that they drank out of. And I just wonder, you know, Mr. Kennedy as a director had to, you know, still be, you know, strong for the young people, for the students, and I know that had to be very difficult to live through that period. But when he told the story, I remember it wasn't a dry in the house. Everybody was like, you know, wow. It was very deep and an emotional story, and I still remember it. Oh, walk together, children. Don't get weary. Walk together, children. Don't get weary. Walk together, children. Don't get weary.